A few months ago, I felt that I had a rather human problem that could use a technical solution. I was living about half an hour away from my boyfriend, and I felt that I wanted a bit more of a uh, connection to him, since we couldn't see each other as much as we would like to. So I built these cubes. They each change color randomly. Uh, when you touch them together like so, they connect magnetically and start glowing very brightly. When you take them apart, they will have synchronized color. The exact pattern of the colors is determined by the pseudo random number generator, and so they will each go through the same sequence of colors. There is a bit of a clock drift. After about 30 minutes, there will be a slight delay. After about an hour, the cubes will be completely desynchronized, but they're still symbolically going through the same thing. Let's take a look inside one of them. All right, here I've taken one of the cubes apart so we can take a look at the innards. Uh, the casing is just a baseball display case that I sanded down to give it a nice fuzzy glowy effect. The electronic components are uh, stock stuff off of Adafruit. You've got a, a Pro Trinket here supported by a, a lithium ion charge controller. The lights, of course, are WS2812 NeoPixels, everyone's favorite. Uh, the battery is 400 milliamp hours. That's enough to get us to each other's houses and we can boop them together and they do the glowy thing. Uh, actually, it's a lot more than that. It's like a 18 hour battery life, but oh well, why not? Uh, the magnetic stuff is this reed switch here and that mag and that rare earth magnet there. Uh, this is uh, satisfactory. It's a nice clean signal. I would have liked something a bit more analog so they could get brighter and brighter and brighter to get close to each other, but that just turned out not to really be feasible. Uh, when I showed these to a few friends, they wanted their own and they wanted to pay money for them. So I did a little production run over Christmas and made about six units, made some money, but it was pretty obvious that though there was a market for this sort of glowy couples gift thing, there was not a profit to be made in doing this out of Adafruit components and uh, baseball cubes. So I decided to design my own PCB. This uh, will be a bit of a, a, a bit of a tour down the production process for someone who has no idea what they're doing. Hopefully this will shed some light on what you should not do. It's very important. Don't make any of the mistakes that I'm about to tell you about. All right, let's move on to production board number one. Not having any formal education in electronics design or engineering, I wasn't quite sure where to start on this. After studying the schematics that Adafruit so helpfully posted online, I uh, came to this sort of design. I just sort of threw it together in fritzing, not really sure what I was doing. I used a sort of conservative design choices here. Everything is through hole as much as possible, since I had never really done any uh, surface mount soldering. Uh, some of the parts had to be surface mounts, for instance, this charge controller and that USB connector. And uh, when I tried to put this together, it did not work at all. So I posted the design to the electronics subreddit. They told me everything I had done wrong. It was very helpful. And the next design almost did work. For the second iteration of the design, I graduated over to KiCad for my design purposes. The overall uptick in build quality is apparent. The trace is much more regular, much less point-to-point -point and auto-routery. I'm really happy with this. Also, I started using service mount components as much as possible after getting over my overall fear of those. We can see here that I've also added a in-circuit programmer for prototyping purposes that turned out not to be very useful because this overall design was fundamentally broken in a way that I should have caught beforehand. It was, I was pulling up to ground for some bizarre reason. Don't know why. So we moved on pretty rapidly to iteration three. In this version, I finally started working on miniaturization. I got it down to about uh, a third of the size it was and got everything much more compact. The uh, in-circuit programmer did get cut uh, in the space crunch, but everything else made it through. However, I did forget one trace. Uh, the trace between this point and this point did not quite exist. I probably could have bodged it together, but at this point I was getting pretty anxious to get a very good thing done, and so I decided to scratch the whole thing and move on to my first working model. This was the first functional model. As you can see, it got a good bit larger. This was to hide the 400 milliamp hour battery behind it. That's the same one that I used in the original cubes. Uh, turns out I did not really need that much battery since that size kept us going for about three days straight. This was very nice, but not really useful. 
Uh, as you can see, it does all the full things, does the full rainbow. Unfortunately, this turned out not to be a viable design. The size of the board made it unsuitable for what I was now going for, which was a sort of a necklace style thing, a sort of a pendant. However, I would note that this was the first single-sided version. As you can see on this other one, it is purely single-sided. This was because I was planning on making these at home at some point. However, I started looking into the process for making your own PCBs, and it turned out to really not be cost-effective, and more trouble than it's worth, honestly. The next one combines both the very nice size of the last one and the very nice workingness of this one. By this version, the design had pretty firmly cemented itself as a sort of necklace pendant thing. I had decided that the battery might be a bit too heavy to hang around the neck, so I came up with what I thought was a pretty clever idea of having the battery at the end of the necklace side and have the two leads coming off of it forming the uh, necklace part of the battery. Uh, this turned out to be a very bad idea. Not only did it mean having to build two enclosures instead of one, the battery got distressingly warm at the back of my neck. Now, it wasn't getting actually dangerously warm, but it was enough to make me a bit worrisome about it. So I decided to put the battery on the back where it will remain for all future designs. This was almost right. Very, very close. We only have a few more to go. This one is completely perfect in every way, except for how I forgot to generate the ground plane before I sent in the Gerber files. I ordered 12 of those. Feel kind of stupid about that. Oh well. And here we have the final production version of the Synchro Pendant. Erroneously numbered with version 3.4, since I had completely lost track of how many times I've gone through this process, but 3.4 has a nice ring to it, so there we go. At this point, I'd uh, pretty much given up hope on making any kind of nice enclosure for them, so I decided to make the boards themselves as pretty as possible. So I centered all the components, tried to get everything lined up nicely, uh, wrote in some text here, put a little space here to write the uh, seed number so you can tell which one goes with which one. That'll be really nice once I figure out how to write onto silk screen. Pretty much anything, everything I can find just wipes right off, I don't know. Uh, as we can see, we have successfully built two of them. They will successfully talk to each other. And they're a bit looser on the synchronization, though. I think the internal clock is a bit fuzzy on these AT tinies, But it's working pretty good. I hope to be able to make enough of these to maybe support my making them. I don't know how much to charge them. I don't know how to sell them, who to sell them to. But these are problems that can be solved. The important thing is I've built a product. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, strange tour through my own realms of failure. Uh, if you are going through your own realms of failure, please take what you can, do what you will with it. See you next time. Bye.